I've been playing Crusader Kings 3 for about two years now, and over that time I thought I had seen it all. But a few days ago I stumbled across a strategy so powerful, I'm afraid if I tell you guys, you'll never play a CK3 game without it again. What if I told you there is a way to get your vassals to pay you almost 100% of their income? Think about it guys, the whole reason you need vassals in a game like Crusader Kings 3 is because of this little mechanic called the domain limit. You can only hold a certain amount of land personally, and for every domain you hold over that limit you'll start losing income and manpower until you gain nothing at all. So if you want to remove the domain limit from your games, all you're going to need are your favorite god's little foot soldiers. You see, if you're able to get one of these theocratic vassals, they pay you tax not based on some warped contract, but instead how pious a ruler you are. And once you hit the highest level of devotion, they will start to give you just over half Let the money they make. Let him cook now. Pair that with a perk from the Intrigue Tree and a Dynasty Legacy from Guile and we can bring this percentage all the way up to 97%. Oh so let's not waste any more time, get into the game so I can show you exactly how to set your empires up to absolutely destroy Crusader Kings 3. Alright, so this strategy, you don't need to be in a very specific spot to be able to make it work. The only thing that you kind of want is to have a lot of these temple holdings nearby. Because um, you're going to need temples in order to like farm these theocratic vassals. So today I'm going to be playing as this vassal of the Kingdom of East Francia. He's going to get us a lot of piety, which is what we need. And if I zoom in here, you can see he does have a bunch of territory in his realm that has these temple buildings. And if I press start over here in the game, um, you can actually see if I go to my vassals that if I sort by theocracy, we actually have two theocratic vassals, which are called prince bishops already in our territory, which is good because like I explained in the beginning, it's a little bit tricky to create these guys. But luckily for you, I just released another video on this channel explaining all the different ways you can actually create these theocratic vassals. So you won't have to start as a realm that already has theocratic vassals like one of um, one of the former Carolingian empires. You can start, you know, as maybe a Hastine could be really fun. And you can create your own theocratic vassals from a few different ways. But for the sake of this video, I'm just really trying to show off how powerful it can be to use only theocratic vassals um, in your realm. For that case, I'm just going to start as somewhere that already has a couple of them, which are located right over here in my realm. If you look at our feudal vassals, you can see we have this guy down here. He doesn't have any, any negative modifiers, mm. but the default tax he's okay, going to give okay. us is 10%. Many. So he makes 5.1 gold, which means that he's going to be now paying us 0.5 tax per month, which is actually a pretty high amount. Uh, this guy's our brother right now, and you can see if I hover over this, he has a decent amount of land, personally. Um, he's not going to be able to hold all of these personally, he's going to have to grant these away, and that amount is going to go down because you end up getting the situation where he grants his land to vassals, his vassals pay him 10% of their money, and then he pays us 10% of his, his money, just really weakening the, the value you get for each one of these castles in your territory. The whole reason we're doing this strategy is because you can only hold so many holdings on your own. Uh, we're holding these four pieces of land right now and each one of them are generating this much tax and this many um, levies. But using this method of theocratic vassals, we are going to be pretty much generating almost 100% of these values but for every single county in your realm, which as you can imagine is going to be absolutely nuts. Our feudal vassals give us 10% tax. Our republic vassals are actually pretty decent. They give you 20% tax, but normally in the beginning of the game, they don't really generate you that much gold. Like uh, your cities don't have, he's from this city right here. You can see it's an empty city with one building slot. So he's not going to be making us that much money in the first place. And then if we go to theocratic vassals, you can see they generate us right now 15%. So 5% more than your feudal vassal. For every single level of piety that we increase, 
this is going to go up by 10%, leading to an ultimate 55% of their tax when you hit religious icon. So in order to demonstrate this, the first thing we're actually going to do is go on a pilgrimage. We have 300 gold right now, which is very decent. Uh, we're going to go on a pi uh, pious pilgrimage to Cologne. It's not too far. And we're actually going to tur turn this cost up just to squeeze a little bit more piety out of this thing. And we're going to make sure to go on a altruism uh, focus because, again, that increases the piety gain from this pilgrimage. In order to really show this method, I'm going to need a lot more land that I'm holding right now. And one way we can get more land is if we look at our brother here, he's unmarried and we are his <coughs> primary heir. So if he were to die somehow, that would mean we would get all of these titles at once, which we can then grant away to one of our theocratic vassals in order to show off how the theocratic vassals work, how you can uh, create more of these guys. For this reason, I'm going to go down Intrigue, we're going to go with the first focus here to get a little bit more Agent Acceptance, also increase our Intrigue, which is pretty pitiful right now. That should get our chance up to 30. We can also put our Spy Master on Support Schemes, maybe we can find a better Spy Master, like our brother-in-law here. And you can see already we brought this up to 42%. If we just go ahead and invite, you know, maybe this guy over here, give him a little bribe. Um, you can see we now get this up to 62. I'm going to maybe get this up higher if we need to, but that should be okay for now. Okay, so I'm getting some pop-ups here for the um, Crusade event. Anytime I see an option that gives us piety, I'm going to take it because, again, we want to get to um, the highest level of piety as possible, as fast as possible, to really show off how powerful these theocratic vassals can be. And there you go. So uh, we ended up gaining 400 um, piety from this, plus all those pop-ups bringing us up to 1,000, and we hit the faithful level of devotion. So now if we go to our vassals, we look at those two theocratic vassals that we were, had before, you can already see we bumped this up to 25%, 10% more than the previous tier. And already this vassal down here is paying us 1.2 tax per month. He has to go blood. He has to go blood. All right, so here goes the murder scheme against our brother. 75% chance. Nani? Oh my goodness. So it didn't go through. A little bit annoying, but we'll do it again. A few moments later. Gotcha. All right, so this time we did the murder scheme and we killed him. And you can see right there, we inherited all of his beautiful land, which we can now go ahead and create a new theocratic vassal. And I'm going to show you guys how to do this, which is very simple. Once you have one theocratic vassal, holy shit, this guy looks cool. Gotcha! Once you have one theocratic vassal, if you look at the other temples in their land, they actually, uh, they can hold these things personally, but if they go over their domain limit, they have to grant them away. So right now you can see this guy has two of three, he has two of three holdings and both of these holdings here, you can see have their own holders which are which are theocratic vassals of him so if we click on these guys you can see we can right click on them and then grant them all the land we would want uh, this can't be done if you for example go to a um, if I go to a temple in my territory that I hold we actually own this temple you can see we're the holder and then we lease it to our main priest this guy over here with the glasses we can't grant him land because he's our prince bishop. He's like the council member who is a priest. So they cannot take land from us. Also, what sometimes happens if I can find an example. Okay, like here you can see this is um, our marshal's territory. He has all this territory. He has a temple over here. If I click on this temple, he again is the holder and he leases it to this priest here. So this priest just like our um, court, just like our counselor priest, we cannot grant him the title. You can only grant it to priests who are under other priests. And this is kind of how we're going to keep creating new theocratic vassals by giving land to these priests who are members of other theocratic vassals. Like we're going to give him all this territory here, which I think is all part of the same duchy. Yeah, it is. Uh, and now you can see he is way over his limit, 
So eventually he's going to have to grant away some of these temples in his territory, mainly this one here, and we're going to create another uh, potential theocratic vassal that we can grant more land to. I am actually going to switch my main title to this duchy over here because I plan on getting rid of these two counties as well. I'm going to try to just hold like one duchy this game to show you really how powerful it is having these theocratic vassals. So because of this, I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to grant, I'm going to find this other theocratic uh, vassal, grant him these two territories. We now have four theocratic vassals and if I let the game play here just a little bit, you can see the guy who we granted this territory to already is giving us 0.8 tax per month, Money. bringing our total vassal tax up to 3.7. And all of our four theocratic um, vassals are giving us heaps of tax compared to the rest of our vassals. All right, so um, remember I was taking uh, theocratic vassals from this guy's two temples here. You can see he was at four of three because we took both of these away from him. But then he ended up having to grant this one back to somebody else. So you can see now we have a new person, a new theocratic vassal, which we can grant titles to. Um, just demonstrating how we're going to continuously be uh, reloading our theocratic vassals. Similarly, this guy down here, uh, he has five right now, but he had six before because he was holding this temple. He also granted it to this guy who will now act as another potential theocratic vassal for us. And because of that, I'm going to go over here and ask the Pope for a claim on this duchy down here because the Pope doesn't like this guy. You can always see in your current situation if he's willing to give you claims on places. And if we do this, it costs us a little bit of piety, but we have a lot of piety from that uh, pilgrimage that we did. So now if we go down here, we should be able to declare war on him for my claims, which is the entire title. And then eventually, We'll be able to revoke this land away from this person, although I don't really have um, plenary assemblies yet, which is a bit of a bummer. But we'll be able to revoke that from him and uh, grant it to these vassals, increasing the number of theocratic vassals we have, increasing the amount of tax we have. It's free real estate. Get back, ah! Looks like the king died. That doesn't really do too much for us. Doesn't really hurt us at all. Uh, Bavaria has split from the East Francia Kingdom, but you know, we're still doing all right. Gotcha. Okay, and it looks like we captured the um, the ruler of this area, so we can take it over for ourselves. We're gonna have to wait till we pick up plenary assemblies so we can revoke it from these people and regrant it. But you know, it's more land that we can eventually give to our uh, priests a little bit further down the line. So I have a lot of gold here. I'm Upgrading my land a little bit, but you know, not too much. Just filling it out with things like farms and fields. Picking up some military buildings to boost our uh, station men-at-arms damage and stuff. But let's do a little test. We have this guy over here who makes 2.4 gold per month. He currently pays us 25% uh, of that, which is around 0 0.9 gold per month. Let's go into his capital and um, build him a farms and fields. And that should be finished in three years. We're going to come back and then see just how much money he's paying us after that. And you have to remember increasing his gold on income, uh, it just encourages him to keep developing, like keep developing things more. Like you can see in this temple down here, he already um, spent his money on constructing prayer halls, which give him 0.2 tax per month. And then we get 25% of that, which is approximately 0.05 tax per month. Not only does this give us a lot of tax right away in terms of our prince uh prince bishops but down the line the more they improve their land and i've heard or at least i've read that um they are more likely to invest in their counties than certain feudal lords are who only care about uh men at arms and things like that but we just went to devoted servant level of piety um so now you can see we're making 5.4 uh, tax from our vassal tax. It's actually almost more than our domain tax right now, which is pretty impressive. Mm. You can see a lot of our guys are giving us one or more now. Uh, one problem is this guy down here who I gave this nice land to, he has beautiful land, but he keeps getting <laughs> raided and uh, that has a huge effect on his gold income. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Um, and it's getting raided by people who are like way too strong for us also, which is not good. But that's kind of why I'm trying to also build my strength a little bit in order to 
fight off these uh, these guys who are coming to raid us. Oh man, we just got a brutal, ah, oh, brutal trait. Look at that, <laughs> minus six to everything in the severe penalty. Great. Also, this guy finished the uh, farms and fields. So if we look at the tax, you can see our vassal tax has now out outgrown our domain tax. We're making 6.2 from our vassals, and this guy is giving us a whopping 1.6. So I'm getting a pretty bad penalty to our tax because I have too many territories being a uh, for being a duchy. One way out of this would be to um, scheme my way to the throne of the kingdom of East Francia. Or I could do independence and then I would be able to um, take the decision to create a new kingdom, which is another option. And um, that would stop those penalties. It also is good because it gives you an extra domain. It also gives you a new men at arms regiment, which we're fully maxed out at right now. So all of those things would be good. The only problem is East France is pretty strong right now and he has some strong allies. So I think I'm going to wait for him to die. And he's 52, so he could die relatively soon. I am a surgeon! I am a surgeon! I am... I am a surgeon! I what happened here? Oh, look at this, guys. We just got some free land down here in this place we took earlier. That's actually pretty huge um, because, like we said, we can now grant this land too. So we have this guy here. We can um, grant him. Yeah, yeah, yeah these three uh, counties and they don't have the best control right now and just like the, his gold our taxes should also go up with him already giving us 0 0.7 after just receiving those counties so we just earned our first dynasty legacy and i'm going to go for something i don't normally go for here oh actually so there's kind of two options that we could go for uh, we want to get to tier 4 because that either lets us get this one here which gives us more powerful vassal tax contribution or we could go for um, the one in Guile which gives us intimidated vassal tax contribution which could be good. Also there's a play you can do later um, once we get once we really start pumping tax where if we go down If we go here and pick up fear tax, you can see we get 15% tax if we intimidate vassals and then 30% um, tax if we terrify vassals. And this kind of happens the, um, the more dread you have and you can get dread by like executing prisoners and stuff. So this is a pretty cool way to get a lot more tax from your vassals. And if we actually pair that with um, the guile tree, I think that would be pretty fun. So you know what I'm going to um, go down Guile. It's not something I normally do, but I think using the I think using the uh, terrified mechanic could be really fun. We already have 20 dread right now. Oh, scary! Um, so we have a pretty important impasse here. We're gonna die very soon, but we get to choose one more trait for our son. I'm thinking I'm gonna go for Callus instead of Just. Just is really good for stewardship, but like we don't need that much stewardship. We're only gonna hold a small amount of land this game, and I think. Callus will be a lot better because I do want to do a bunch of murder schemes and we went down the guile tree So I think it only makes sense. I'm gonna pick up this perk here Although we're gonna die really soon so it doesn't really matter But this gains us plus 10% vassal tax and that's actually gonna be a really big perk for us to pick up this game Because you can see we're getting now 7.1 gold from our vassal tax 10% has a pretty big uh, impact on that on that uh, amount right there Okay guys, we just died, so we're playing as our 13 year old son now. I'm a little bit like pissed off. I was really, one of the main reasons I wanted to play as this guy because he was 16 when we started, but we only got to play uh, as him until 40 um, before eventually dying. But you know, Crusader Kings 3, anything can happen. So you just have to roll with it. Our tax is gonna be pretty, uh, pretty largely affected by this because you can see we're now only dutiful. So we're not getting all the delicious tax we were getting before from our theocratic vassals. We did pick up Chaste, Chast. We did pick up Chast, Chaste, um, which is a virtue to Catholics. So we get plus one piety per month from that. So that should help us 
uh, with this character to get all the piety we need. Okay, there you go. So we just turned 16, so we can go on a pilgrimage now. It would be pretty good. So it looks like when this guy dies, he's still lined up to play as a 7-year-old. And he's getting kind of old. So I might do stewardship first just to pick up this one that lets us claim our th uh, the throne of our king. Because that way we can become a kingdom really easily. But as for right now, we have 200 gold, so we can go on our pilgrimage activity. Pious pilgrimage. We'll just go to Cologne because it's not too far. And let's head out and hopefully we'll get a good amount of piety from this. At least to bump us up one, if not two, tiers. Alright, so I have so much gold at this point. Um, I don't really feel like upgrading my buildings to tier 2. Instead, what I'm going to do is go on another pilgrimage. This time, though, I might go a bit further because we have the gold to do it. Like, let's see if we want to go to the Vatican. Is that too far? Is that too crazy? Okay, yeah, I guess we can go to Canterbury. I know, let's go for full price. We have the gold to do it anyway. I'm also going to start the um, claim throne scheme. Against my liege, we have a really high percent chance that this goes through because we actually are we are his spy master, which is pretty funny. All right, so we finished the pilgrimage and we've gained 800 piety from that. So that is very decent, double the amount we got from uh, the other pilgrimage. And we actually go halfway to getting to uh, Paragon of Virtue, which is the second to last tier. And you can see our gold goes back up, our vassal tax goes back up to 7.3 and all of our nice uh, prints... Prince Bishop's paying us over one gold, except for this guy down here, who um, I'm pretty sure is the one who keeps getting raided. Yeah. Okay, guys, we just discovered plenary assemblies, which is huge because now we can revoke land from our vassals. As for right now, maybe let's go to tier two crown authority and see if there's anybody who would like us to revoke their land. So we got one guy over here who's going to accept us. Now, this will gain us some tyranny causing my subjects to lose opinion with me. But I don't think that's too much of a problem. I am i don't think these um, Prince Bishops really joined factions against you. I heard they're pretty docile as vassals, but we're going to have to test that in this game. So let's go ahead. Let's revoke this guy's title. Um, this one here, 100% chance he accepts. You've got mail. And there you go. So we picked up Hamburg. I might actually hold Hamburg because it is part of my capital duchy here. So maybe I should hold this one personally. Oh, wait a minute. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Um, Hamburg is actually a city, so I can't really hold this. Okay, so this vassal here, she's the one who has all of this territory. So we're gonna revoke this from her. Hopefully she won't accept. Okay, she did accept, okay. Because I wanted to um, go to war with her, lock her up, and then reallocate all of this territory that she has. A few moments later. Okay, so this um, lady who we actually revoked this land down here, the one who owns all this territory, she is a fornicator, so we can try to imprison her. Uh, that's not going to succeed, so she's going to rise up against us, but we are a lot stronger than her, so... <laughs> I don't see how we would lose this war. And there you go. We can enforce our demands. I think we lock her up. And now if we right click on her, we should be able to revoke her titles. And there you go, we took away all her land. Um, and now if we look at how this is organized, we could, we could give some to this guy. Boom, boom, boom. Because that's technically part of his domain. And he's going to now get more money for owning these pieces of land. And his money is good because it makes us get more money. You can see our vassal tax is all the way up to 8.8 .8 right now. Um, we can give Patterborn to this guy. And then finally, we can find a temple like this over here with a new theocratic ruler, and we can grant them these two tiles and have a, um, a new theocratic vassal here who is going to be getting us more vassal tax, bringing us almost up to 10 uh, gold per month just from all of our um, prince bishops. 
So another reason I wanted to, I really wanted this tile personally is because you can see they actually have a mine over here Gold. and it is a good mine because it makes five tax per month and we just need a tiny bit more money. Um, actually, we just need to wait one month. There you go. And we can go ahead and construct this mine. I'm going to put my guy to increase the uh, control over here. So I'm kind of interested to see what's going to happen up here. Um, I can't hold Hamburg personally, but I can grant it to one of these Prince Bishops. Let's see, does he turn into a Republican vassal? Okay, he does turn into a Republican vassal if I grant him that. That's okay, I guess. Like, I can't hold it anyway, so I might as well give it to somebody who can at least generate me a little bit of tax from it instead. And now we pretty much almost only have theocratic vassals. We have these three guys over here who are still feudal. And then I have one guy down here who is also feudal, but every other person is a pit, uh, Prince Bishop Rick. Okay, here we go. We have our claim throne scheme ready. And it looks like it went through. So now we actually have a full claim on the kingdom of East Francia, which if we go, um, if we go over here to factions against my liege, we can start a claimant faction with me as the um, claimant. And uh, oh my goodness, guys, he is not looking particularly weak right now. He's allied to like everybody. What the heck? The good thing is his son, his 14 year old son isn't allied to anybody yet. So we could murder him. We have a pretty high percent chance. Actually, I'm going to start this scheme because he's not really dying on his own, although he is poor, his health wise. But once he dies, we break some of those alliances. We can claim the throne for ourselves and then we will have control of all of East Francia and we can start slowly converting it to our um, theocratic ways. Oh, okay guys, so I was in the middle of my murder scheme for the king here, and it looks like he ended up dying. And that's pretty important because now you can see there's a 15 year old in charge. And I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm going to press my demands of my military faction here to install myself on the throne as he has lost all of those alliances that his father had. So you can see our troops have went up to 3,600 because we were paying him a lot of levies as tax and his has went down to 2,200 only. So if we raise our entire army here, we should have a pretty easy time running right into his capital and um, seizing that down. Okay, we reduce him to 300 troops only. So now we can probably just go around and um, you know. What? What the fuck? Man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break my monitor. I swear. Uh, I think it's, I think it's time to, um, to go again. We go again, boys. I think it's time to go again. We go again, boys. Oh, oh. it's time to go again. We go again. Okay. At least the game felt bad for me. We had to do a whole other disillusion war um, because somehow this guy took control of the throne before us. But uh, in that fir very first battle, we were able to capture him, hit 100%, and now we have become the king of East Francia. And now we should replenish the 5,000 men, which actually puts us the pretty sure the biggest of all of these big kingdoms that are nearby us. And once we reorganize our land, we should be looking really good. Um, already though, I would assume we are making the most money out of everyone. As you can see, we're making 12 from our domain, which is decent. But 14.5 from our vassals right now. And as you can see, the top, all top five vassals right now are all Prince Bishops. Okay, so I tried to revoke this guy's land up in the north and um, it started a war with some of my vassals. That's okay, because I can then revoke all of the land together um, once I win that war. We'll enforce our demands here. Everybody should be in our jail now. We can revoke these titles. And we can give these to their respective, the respective priests who should be holding these in order to get as much tax as possible for me. Spend 500 gold on this pilgrimage. We better get a ton of prestige or um, piety from this. 
it will definitely bump us up to Paragon of Virtue, which you should see give us even more tax. And now that we'll be getting almost 50% tax for our priest's land, I think we should probably also just start upgrading the buildings in these areas for them. Let's look at this for as an example. To go to tier 2 to tier 3 farms and fields in my home county costs uh, 250 gold and it would get me a tax increase of 0 0.3. Now looking at this guy's land I could make him and I could make him a farms and fields down here in this castle and it only costs 150 gold and it would still get me 0 0.25 gold with the current tax that they're giving me and actually because I have because uh, I have this perk Money. right here, increasing vassal tax by 10%, this will actually go to above 50%. So I'm getting the exact same value of, as upgrading a farms and fields from tier one to tier two in my own territory, but I'm paying a hundred and I'm but I'm paying a hundred gold less to get that value by upgrading a farms and fields in one of my vassals' lands. And there you go. We finished the pilgrimage. We get a thousand two hundred um, piety from that bringing us up to Paragon of Virtue. We're actually halfway to Religious Icon and we still have 270 gold and we're making 31 gold per month, almost hitting 20 gold per month from just our vassal taxes, guys. We, uh, we've we almost maxed out our taxes from these Prince Archbishops and these Prince Bishops. The one with the most money is now giving us 3.6 gold per month on his own. That is incredibly valuable. And like we saw in some of these regions where I was trying to look for places to upgrade their farms and fields, they have actually been upgrading a lot of the buildings on their own. Like here he built a tier 2 farms and fields, here he built a tier 1. So they do seem to be investing in their own territory as well, which I have to say is very respectable. It's going to be just another way we're going to snowball even further. Okay, it's probably been long enough that I can revoke this guy's titles. Our truce has ran out. Boom, we get this whole duchy that we can now grant to, you guessed it, another theocratic vassal here. And we're going to give him four counties and a duchy, so he's going to be very friendly to us. And he should be already making 3.4 gold per month, which has just increased our tax income from him a ton. Um, probably putting him all the way at the number two earner for us. Four gold per month he's giving to us right off the bat. That is absolutely massive. And we actually go to almost 6,000 men right now. There is no other kingdom at that level that I can see. The only people close are the Byzantine Empire. But you have to remember, it's only been 42 years since the game started. I've been taking my time because it's been, uh, it's taken, it hasn't been the simplest thing setting all of this up. But now that I've set it up, man, I'm making heaps of money, 35 gold per month. That's way more than the Byzantine Empire. It's more than the Abbasid Empire, although they have more troops than me. And I am not that big, guys. I am just maximizing everything out of my land right now, and it is wonderful. I only have two um, dukes here who actually aren't who actually aren't um, bishops right now, which is crazy. Everyone else is a bishop in my entire realm. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. He's making 5.1 gold. These are awesome because you can see they hold 100% control when I do this. Like he's making 5.1 gold from that. And if we look at our gold, that should mean that we're making 5 gold from him because we get literally half his taxes. Oh, I realize what happened here. I accidentally granted away my, um, my gold mine. <laughs> To this guy when I gave him the duchy. I wanted to keep that county for myself. He is still giving me half of his money so I didn't really lose too much I guess. I lost like I was making 6.4 gold now I'm only making 3.2 so lost a little bit of gold from that but it kind of fits with our play style. You know I'm really proving by just holding four normal pieces of land I'm really gonna prove how powerful <laughs> this play style really is. Okay guys, I just finished our most recent pilgrimage. You can see we went up to religious icon um, level of devotion, the highest we can go, which brings our vassal tax all the way up to 34.3.
if we hover over one of them, you can see they're actually giving us 60.5% of their taxes. They're giving most of the money they make, they're sending right to me. Okay, I don't know what happened here, but we had a prince uh, bishopric here. But somehow it converted back to feudal, and that's the first time I've seen this happen. Maybe they granted some land away to somebody and they rose up against them. But we simply cannot be having that, especially, especially considering that uh, this title right here is the one with the gold mines. Nope. I'm not sure how this guy had lost it, but I'll give him back the um, the titles in question, and this time he better not lose it again. Silly goose. Alright guys, I'm wrapping up a war of a claim that the Pope had given to me on um, this county in Bavaria. I think it would be kind of cool if I could create the um, Empire of Germania, but I would need a lot more land before I'm able to do this right now. But I just had this pop-up available to us, which lets us pick up fear tax. And I want to see how much more tax we're going to be generating. Right now, we're making 54.7, which is the highest I've seen so far in this game. But I think I have a good amount of dread. You can see I have 82. So there should be enough vassals that I have who are actually terrified of me. So we're going to unlock this. And look at that jump, guys. We went all the way to 67.5 from that increase. Oh my God. Oh my goodness, 10 gold from some of these guys, like this guy here. Let's look actually at our vassals and we'll see just what percentage um, these guys are paying to us. There it is guys, 77% of their tax. Holy crap. Um, I also picked up the second tier of the Guile Tree. If I can make it to tier 4 here, that would be another 20% tax. On top of that 77, bringing us to 97% tax. They would be paying us pretty much every single dollar they make would be going right into our pockets. All right, I'm doing the same thing I did for um, Salzburg, uh, this duchy, but for Augsburg now. These are really good ones to take control of because the owner actually owns a lot of land in them personally. So that just means when we uh, when this truce runs out and we take this land for ourselves, we get... We get all these counties personally, so it just makes it easier to for when we grant it, um, for when we end up granting it to a guy like this guy, he can hold them personally and then like you know decide what he wants to do with it. All right, guys, and there you go. It just went through where this guy was able to wrestle control of um, the region away from this priest. So I'm gonna have to revoke his title now that he did that. Oh, you can see we actually have some prince bishops who are joining this. That's a bit surprising. This is the first time I actually had any of these priests try to join this war. Like, I'm trying to support your your fellow priests anyway, but sure. Okay, so I allied myself to France pretty much for no reason. Um, like, I realized I thought like I wasn't going to be declaring war on them for a while, so I thought it could be a good idea. But um, then he called us into a war, and I see an 11k doom staff walking around. Uh, hopefully, they won't come and attack me. Okay, <laughs> turns out they will. Like, I'm not. I'm not even anywhere near the war like you're going for war over here what are you doing coming all the way into my territory to like seek out a battle with me that is so annoying oh my god and now he's a rival with me like i don't even want to be in your war anymore brother just leave me alone god damn it like why are you taking this land why are you taking my land what the fuck dude okay so um the guys in this French war have left me alone for a little bit, so at least I was able to win this war. I can revoke his titles and give it right away to um, this guy who hopefully, now that he controls like most of this territory, will not be under threat from this one feudal vassal I have down here. Um, okay guys, so it looks like we just died. So I think we lost the land we had down here, it went to our son. You can see our vassal tax has dropped a bunch because we're no longer um, religious icon. We've dropped down to faithful, but we still have 7,000 gold saved up. And like we had planned before, what we're going to do with this gold is go around and construct some more temple buildings. I think two temples will give me about 4,000 um, devotion. So I'll do two temples for now. Those will be done in just five years and four years. One good thing about actually leaving this guy Croatia, if that's what we want to do, 
is um he's gonna get us a lot of renown because that makes us that that means we have two kings now so i think i will let him keep croatia and i'll just ransom him here he's pretty poor but i think that's fine so i just um switched around my perks a little bit i went down the theology focus and you can see we're already going to be getting 8.8 .8 piety per month um, so we should be back to making a ton of money from our vassals really, really quickly here. But already you can see our domain only makes us 5 gold, our vassal tax makes us 24. So it's still eclipsing it even though we're only at the faithful level of uh, devotion. So you can see we went up to devoted servant just from, um, not even from our temples finishing here. But you can see that it's only 2,000 to go up one level of devotion. Well, to go from devoted servant to paragon of virtue, they always increase every single uh, tier, how much it costs. But with just one of these temples finishing, that will actually put us to paragon of virtue already the second highest tier. So I think we are gonna be doing pretty well um, in terms of our gold income. And finally, I've been waiting for this. Our army has been a little bit weak We've had a lot of men like levies, but we haven't had too strong um, a military in terms of men at arms. But with picking up mustering grounds, that what that now lets us do is um, is we can pick up a new men at arms regiment, and we actually have um, these armored footmen available to us, which are pretty beefy. And of course, if we put them in a territory which I have lined up right here, replace the onagers that are already there. They're going to be gaining even more damage from the buildings, so they're going to go up to 55 damage already. What we can also do is destroy the regiments of pikemen because we can pick up retinue pikemen, which are even better. Yeah. We can bump these guys up to tier 6. We can bump our yeah. uh, bowmen up, which are getting a lot of damage. Yeah. Bump our horsemen yeah. up as well. Yeah. On a yeah. so, you know, like, Let's just pump everything to max out because we really have a lot of gold income, if you remember. That should make our military right now a whole lot beefier than it was before. Like, we were going into wars with people with only 5,000 men, even though we had like around 10,000. And it was still a little bit tricky just because most of our men were coming from our levies and not our men at arms size. But now that we got that technology, we can really use all that money we were getting and just pump it right into our men at arms. And as these guys fill out, we will become, we will become incredibly scary. And That's there you go good. guys, you can see we just finished the first temple only, and it already has put us up to a Paragon of Virtue level of devotion. When the second temple finishes, we'll go halfway to Religious Icon, and I can probably just let it fill out on its own, because we are making 10 piety per month right now. You can see it pumps our Vassal Tax all the way up to 45. Um, I could probably switch off of Learning when I get the chance to go right back down and pick up Fear Tax to get us that extra 30% from all the Vassals who are going to be scared of us. Then even if I want, I can get this um, perk in the stewardship tree just to get more vassal tax out of them. But as of right now, I do like all the gold we're making. So I realized I had 2000 prestige and I haven't really done anything with my culture this game. And I think it might be a good idea to pick up only the strong. It makes it so that knights must have 12 or above prowess. But we have so much gold that if I'm constantly inviting new knights and finding new knights, I think that's fine. It also makes our men at arms recruitment costs go up, but again, we have a lot of gold, so that doesn't really matter. And it lowers our levy size, but the plus 100% knight effectiveness, I think is gonna be really worth it. Already, if you look at our knights, we only have two knights that would be um, kicked out of our service because they're under 12 prowess. And we can always do the decision right over here to um, invite knights once we get a tiny bit more prestige. So I think um, it's about time Burgundy gets knocked down a few pigs. You can see they've amassed quite a lot of territory. They even invaded the um, Kingdom of Italy recently. So now they're holding three kingdoms. But I recently got a claim on this duchy up here. So I'm going to launch a war against them. And hopefully what it'll do is weaken them enough that other people start coming in and, uh, you know, messing with them. Because, you know, I'm supposed to be the strongest um, kingdom in Europe right now. I'm not supposed to be anybody else who can even compete with us. So we need to knock these guys down a bit. So let's look at this battle. I don't think it's his whole army. I think a little bit of it uh, ran away, which is interesting. If we look at our armored footmen, you can see we're getting boosted 55% of their damage. Our pikemen are being countered, but still dealing also 55 damage, bowmen dealing damage, and our horsemen also, because I have been upgrading 
the military buildings where these guys are stored. I think after I pick up household soldiers, I might go for um, burrs to be able to upgrade those buildings even more because like, let's say if we were to look at this levying ground, um, right now we're getting a 40% damage boost to our heavy infantry, but if we went to tier 4, we'd be getting an 80% plus 40% to the toughness. So it is a pretty big, pretty big difference that you would see. And you can see we did destroy those guys. We're getting raided, bro. Who is this? Ain't no way this guy waited for me to leave and then started raiding me. The absolute disrespect. Oh, and it actually looks like the guy, um, the king who was here died. So now it's an eight-year-old girl who we're fighting. It makes sense why there's also a North Min invasion of this land here. But I want that land for myself later. So these guys are going to have to, they're going to have to leave this area. All right, so we won the war here force our demands and we get a little bit more land i think we might have enough land to usurp the kingdom of frisia which should now give us claims on this piece of land which we can actually do a holy war for the only problem is he's still allied to uh sweden and he's pretty strong somehow but the swedish guy's pretty old so whenever he dies breaks the alliance we can then invade this duchy and we'll have the whole kingdom of frisia for ourselves but you can see we've done a pretty good job of messing with um, messing with Burgundy and there's actually a disillusion war going against her. Let's see if we could actually maybe send this guy some gold. They have a little bit less men, but if we send them a few gifts. Another one, another one, another one, another one, another one. So we sent him a few gifts. You can see he immediately spends those gifts on mercenaries. And now if we look at the... Oh, look at that. We went up to dev Devoted Icon also making us even more money. Not that we need it. But now let's look at this war here. And you can see they actually just passed the young queen here in terms of their military strength. So they have a chance of this dissolution war going through, which would leave a bunch of small regions on our border that we could probably easily invade. Because I think I'd like to create the Empire of Germania before finishing the video. I think I've proven how powerful this method is. Like I'm barely holding any land, nothing crazy. I'm not even playing tall or anything. And uh, we are just making so much money. I don't have anything else to spend it on. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot that this was an option, but we can actually found a new empire because we hold three or more kingdoms now and we have over 80 um, realm size. So I think I'm just going to do that, you know, become the empire. And becoming an empire is pretty good because it gets you another regiment of men at arms. I guess I could just go for more um, heavy infantry because they're pretty strong and we'll go right away to five of five. I'll need to make some more castles in my land later so I can actually have somewhere to station these guys because uh, my four station, my four counties are already full with other men at arms and like getting the damage boost is really important. So before we end the video guys, now that I become, um, I became an empire, what I'm going to do is try to spend this 11,000 gold I amassed by upgrading all of the uh, economic buildings in the in the counties that my my vassals hold personally. Um, like some places like here, you can see we can go for and build. I'm going to build either barracks or um, crop fields because the barracks will get me more units and the crops field will get me more gold. Like this is really, if you want to play this playstyle perfectly, um, this is really what you would be doing. You'd be taking all your gold every so often, going through and upgrading all of your vassals' territory. So I went through, I don't think I hit everywhere, but I did as much as I could. And um, the reality of the situation is, guys, we're already making 70 gold. Like, I'm at the max piety, but you, like you saw, it's very easy to hit max piety with, um, with certain cultural things like religious patronage or even just focusing on getting a lot of piety. Even without really, like, super upgrading all my vassals' land, you can see we're making 
73.5 gold from our vassal taxes and um like just getting some absolutely insane absolutely insane value from these guys we'll give it three years it is currently 966 so i'll give it until 969 when all of these buildings finish in my land and we'll see just how high our gold goes up so i was a little bit worried about this we ended up dying kind of a bummer we only had one son though so we uh like nothing too bad happened here i'll create a couple temples so we can get our uh we can get our piety back up quickly because our taxes did drop to 31 but that kind of does screw our little experiment that we're doing there but we'll see if we get it all the way back up to um paragon of virtue uh maybe we can do some kind of comparison all right guys so i'm just gonna wait a few more months until um these temples i made are finished and that should actually bump us all the way into religious icon and we'll be able to make a full comparison already at paragon of virtue we're making 63 gold so i can imagine we're gonna definitely be beating the um the 75 gold was it that we were making before as our other character so there we go we just went into paragon of virtue we're making 76 right now but i still have to pick up um this perk right here which is going to increase that by another 10 percent okay so here we go stewardship perk we're going to pick up the one that gives us more vassal tax and there you have it guys 84 gold per month so we went up by around 10 gold per month just by doing those few uh farms and fields upgrades all throughout my my territory here so if you really wanted to play this play style to perfection you should be going around and um, like this and upgrading all of your vassals land at least if they're uh religious vassals just go around upgrade their land and you should see this number skyrocket even higher than what i'm seeing right now i think also we had a huge boost in our levies from that as well because not only do the vassals uh the theocratic vassals pay us their um tax as you can see 60 percent of the tax but they also give you a pretty healthy amount of their levies uh just around half i would think there you have it guys i hope i proved to you just how powerful uh just how powerful this play style is if you want to go for a little bit of a wider type game you don't have to hold as much land personally you can just spread and let your vassals do all the work for you and i think we're probably gaining more gold than anybody else could even dream of um at this stage in the game and just as a final note guys the really the best thing isn't to go like all in like i kind of do in these in these playthroughs you can the best thing about this play style and playing tall is you could have a mix of both you could develop your own realm if you develop your own realm in a tall sense build your power sense build your power base like that and then you can treat all your vassals uh like theocratic vassals try to grant them to theocratic vassals in the way i showed in this video and also like uh, if you want to see how to make more theocratic vassals, if you're not starting as some a territory that already has them, you can watch that video I uploaded on the same day today. Um, I'll link it in the description. But if you combine both those play styles, you should have no problems in Crusader Kings 3 to do whatever you want because you're just going to be so incredibly powerful. I hope you really enjoyed this play style, guys. It was a lot of fun to play the game differently, kind of... Um, experiment with the three aquatic vassals and i think it really shows just how powerful it is all right guys i'll be seeing you in the next video bye bye